In this video, a real-time energy management solution is demonstrated to assist the utilities plant operator to make a better decisions in minimizing the energy supply cost to meet energy demand from the processes. Three operation challenges are faced by the utilities plant operators in this demoed process. Firstly, utilities plant operators and the process engineer need to estimate the true performance of the key equipment such as gas turbine, steam boilers, and steam turbines under current operating conditions. The work involves reconciling the utilities balance and identifying the faulty meters. This will help to establish the baseline operation scenario, which is prerequisite for any future operation improvement. Second, in order to adjust operation to minimize energy cost, a number of decisions need to be made on the spot by the plant operators, such as how to allocate the steam generations between packaged steam boilers and HERSIC to improve steam generation efficiency, make generate or buy decisions on the power utilities to trade off the fuel cost and the power cost, decide whether the boiler feed water pump should be driven by steam turbine or electric motor by taking into account availability of the equipment and lastly but not least how to minimize the steam ventings on LP header. In coming week utilities operators is informed that major process will be shut down for maintenance. As a result the HP steam generation from the process waste heat boiler will be reduced by 30,000 pounds per hour and LP steam usage from the process will be reduced by 50,000 pounds per hour. How should the utilities operator adjust the plant operation to minimize the loss? Having these challenges in mind, a real-time energy management solution is proposed to help operator to make better decisions. The deployment of the solution starts by configuring a sidewide utilities model in Aspen Utilities Planner. The model includes all major equipment such as boiler, steam tuber generators, and gas turbines. Include all major utilities consumers and producers. Defined operational constraint such as equipment availability and capacity constraint. All utilities contracts are also fully defined in the model. Once the model are configured and must be validated with the plant data for different operating scenarios, such as the seasonal changes and the different operation modes in the production processes. Once the offline model is validated, it will be connected with the plant data via Aspen Online. The plant data is automatically retrieved from the IP21 database via Aspen Online. The raw plant values will be conditioned and sent to the models. Two utilities models are executed in sequential order. First, data reconciliation run followed by the main optimization is accomplished in the first model. Then, what if scenario models is executed based on the changes in the utilities demand and production entered by the operators. Once the model converged, the results from the model will be updated in user interfaces developed in Aspen One Process Explorer. The entire cycles repeats in every five minutes. First, let's look at the utilities model configured in Aspen Utilities Planner in the offline mode. We have steam boilers, cogen units, consist of gas turbines, heat recovery steam generators, and number of steam turbine and tuber generators included in the flow sheet. Two steam levels, HP steam and LP steam, are also modeled as a steam headers in the flow sheet. Fresh water makeup and total condensate returns are routed to the deaerator and the treated water was recycled back to the boiler house as a water feed. Steam consumption and the steam generations from the production process waste heat boilers are also modeled using feed block and demand blocks. The power balance is modeled with a power header to model the total power demand from the production processes 
and also the purchase from the grid. Once this utility system is configured and validated with the plant data, it is ready to be deployed with Aspen Online. This is the Aspen Online project to drive the utility planner model. As we can see, the two utilities models are included in the project. The first one is the main optimization model. It's specified as a full Aspen Utilities optimization including data reconciliation run and optimization run. The second model is online what-if scenario analysis. It only includes optimization run. The two models are scheduled to run in a sequential order in every five minutes. If we switch to a schedule of the main model, it is scheduled to run on top of the hours in every five minutes. The second model is also scheduled to run in every five minutes, but three minutes past the hour. The plan measurements are bringing into the Aspen Utilities Planner in the form of tags. These tags must have the identical names as those in IP21. A number of data conditioning and massage algorithms are built in in Aspen Online, such as averaging on the DCS tags, data validations, including validity check on the lower bound and upper bounds, overriding the value of the bad quality measurements with the default model values. In addition, Steady state detections can be included in the project on a selected plan measurements. For this particular demo, we did not include the steady state detections. Once the plan tags are conditioned, the conditioned values need to be pushed into the model in order to run the model. These are achieved by mapping the model variables with the plan tags as a source and then selected output tags can be mapped to the output variables so they can be displayed in Aspen 1 Process Explorer. Once all of these are specified, the Aspen Online project is ready to run. This is the main screens of Aspen 1 Process Explorer. Click on the cost summary. As we can see, on top of the screen is showing the model last execution time and conversion status along with the trend for the watchdog of our Aspen Online project. This type of zigzag trend indicates the model are executed successfully in the history. If within any periods this watchdog trend become flat and never recover, it deserves attention from plant operator and process engineer for further investigation. At the bottom of the screen, it listed two utilities to purchase from the market, natural gas and the power input, with the unit cost next to them. These unit costs are highlighted in the blue font, which indicates they are the user input in this demo. User can click on these entries and insert a new cost. In the reality, these values can be automatically updated from data historian or from the other sources. The actual utility flow and the cost are displayed in the format of comparing the current value with the optimum values and the deltas showing the difference between the two. Negative value in the delta indicates the increase and positive value in the delta indicates the reductions or savings. Moving to the steam balance diagram, it gives us the detailed views of utility system. Again, on top of the screen, it shown us the model execution timestamp and convergence status. On top right corner, it's showing two KPIs, imbalance for the HP steam headers and LP steam headers. If the imbalance falling within a certain range, the indicators will change with the color to set alarm so the plant operator can do more investigations. The marginal cost estimations bring the value for the utilities audit, especially for the intermediate utilities which are not purchased directly from the market. As we see, every data point has three values on this diagram. The top values is the reconcile value or the current operation values. The middle values is the optimized value suggested by the optimizer. The bottom values are the difference between the two. 
and these will tell the operator what need to be adjusted in order to achieve optimum plant operation from the current conditions. In this particular demo, the boiler feed water pump could be driven either by the steam turbines, T113, or electric motors. In current conditions, it used electric motors. Therefore, the steam flow from the turbines is a zero. And because of the equipment availability on the T113 is set as not available, the optimized values also is equal to zero. If user click on the available buttons, that will set the equipment availability to available. After five minutes, until the next cycle is completed, we should come back to check. This optimum value could change. For now, let's move on to the what-if analysis screen. This what-if scenario analysis screens enable the operator to manually input the delta of the steam generation and steam consumptions from the process side in case there's a major disturbance on the production processes. User can type in positive or negative value. Again, negative means the reductions on the steam generation or consumptions. Positive means the increase on the steam production or steam consumption. Then we will wait for the next cycles complete to see the results are updated. This capability is important for the plant operators to have online scenario analysis capability should any unplanned event occurred on the production side in a short notice. Switching back to the main steam balance screen, we can see the steam flow to T113 are updated as 33,000 pounds per hour because the availability of the T113 is a set as available. In summary, this demo has shown a real-time energy management solution to enable plant operators to reconcile utility balances and identify faulty meters, to monitor performance of key equipment in the utilities plant, to minimize energy supply cost to meet energy demand from production processes, and finally, to carry out online what-if scenario analysis. To learn more on how to configure an Aspen Online project, please visit Aspen Tech's support website to download the Aspen Online tutorial. Thank you for watching.